Okay, so first up, before we can do anything, we gotta move this, um, I don't even think I can call it a solar arch at this point, it's like half a solar arch. Um, it's like a giant solar table. <laughs> it is like a giant solar table. That's pretty much it. So what we're gonna do now is, um, the two bolts that are holding it on to, that are holding the panels to the arch itself, um, we're gonna cut, and we're just gonna move the two, um, the two panels on top of the deck. For right now and then just throw the top of the arch down to the yard. That's the plan. I wanna run with you, I wanna let go. Arms open wide with a life to call our own. So last week, we gave you a tour of all the damage that was on the bottom and the non-existent damage inside. So today, we're going to actually go inside the cabin. Uh, last season, a lot of people were asking for one, a tour of the boat itself, and two, kind of an overall list of everything we've done. So that's what today is. We'll be giving you a simultaneous tour of the boat and of all the work we want to do and have done thus far. So. Let's get on in there! Now that the solar arch is out of the way, you can actually see the cockpit again. And on the deck we didn't really do much work. The only thing we really did was we had the solar arch, the solar panels mid-deck, and we added a couple BNG systems. Um, other than that, we really didn't do much out here. But in the future, what we do want to do is we are going to build a new solar arch. This time we hope to do it out of fiberglass. We're going to build a hard dodger. We're going to remove these solar panels from the mid deck and redo all of the wood. That's what we have now on the list of things to do outside. It's, it's quite the doozy, but it'll look so much nicer having, I think, a fiberglass arch as opposed to... It's also going to be lighter. Yeah, it will be a lot lighter, so... Because... I'll say, I'll say from back here, but one thing we noticed with the, the panels and the arch that we had was that... Um, the boat we, was back heavy. Yeah, we were a little back heavy compared... I mean, this is where all of our storage is. Yeah. Is back here, so... Between the solar arch and loading the boat, we were a little back heavy. Mm -hmm which didn't help our uh, our ability to sail in point well. No, it didn't. Having the Dodger and the Arch made out of fiberglass, they'll both be a lot lighter. Though the Dodger won't be heavy anyways, because it's just canvas. So that's everything we've done out here. Everything we have on the list of things to do out here, which is subject to change literally at any point in time, because you never know. But let's go inside. First stop on our Ixion Catalina 30 boat tour is the galley. I don't know why it's called that. For all you non boaties it's a kitchen. Maybe somebody can Google why it's called a galley and tell me. So most of what we want to do in here is just aesthetic things. We want to change the countertop, change the sink, change the stuff. So what we want to do for the countertop is we want to do an epoxy pour. Um, there are some kits out there and we kind of want to put our own style and spin on it. The sink... I think the epoxy pour is going to look awesome. I think it will too. Also your mother's obsessed with epoxy pour so maybe she can do it. Yeah maybe. Um, so for the sink we just want to change the sink. We don't need two medium-sized sinks. We can cut it down to one sink I think. And a nicer faucet. And a nicer faucet because this one's from the Cretaceous period. And then we have an old pressurized alcohol stove. We finally figured out how to work this sucker. But it, it's mostly okay. 
yeah, we want something that's easier to use. Um, modern day stoves, you literally just light it and boom, there you go. This one you have to prime it. Takes a little bit longer. We have to wait for everything to heat up and not really a fan of that. But we do like alcohol, so we want to replace this with a modern alcohol stove. Maybe, maybe what we do, alcohol stove on top, microwave below it. Perhaps. We don't know. So Because those like convection microwave oven things, like you could bake in them and, yeah. and whatnot. Super expensive though. Yeah. Um, and we're just going to kind of update this to be a bit more modern back here in the shelves. Yeah. We hate these spindles. <laughs> in, in regards to refrigeration, this boat does not have any. It was built in 1981. Um, and I don't think it was customary at the time for kind of coastal cruisers to have re refrigeration. You so barely had the power to yeah. run them. Right now, all we have now is an ice chest over here in the corner, which right now we use for dry storage because um, it's huge. The food to... stays relatively cool. Yeah, it does. And the retrofitting for this does exist, um, but it's expensive and kind of do it yourself. And we don't necessarily want to do that. And we also don't want to lose the storage. So what we're thinking now is there's two drawers right here. We're going to have a front facing uh, refrigerator and put it right here. That's what a lot of other um, Catalina 30 owners have done. So that's our plan for that. And the storage we lose from there, we're probably going to put some shelving right here. Right here. So that is the galley. Um, most Catalina 30s of this era look like this. Um, there is some slight variations as the years go by, but for the most part, even now they still look the same. Kind of the bigger difference is this is a little catacorner here and the cushion doesn't kind of mesh the same way, but in general, not much has changed on the Catalina yeah. sensor. And the motor made it underneath this, the companionway stairs. Yeah. So uh, not much has changed in the regards for the Catalina 30s from 1981 to 2021. So up next, we will show you the nav desk, which arguably is one of our biggest projects that we want to do. Mm. So, yeah. Thanks, Jake, <laughs> for showing us the galley. We're here at the nav desk. It's very far away from our, our galley slash kitchen. Oh, yeah. I can't even touch your <laughs> fingertips. So, so very far. So what we've done. We've added all of this, and what used to be here is more of these, like it was a little shelf with some spindled rails. It was eh. I mean, it's old fashioned. All of these spindled rails are very like late 70s, early 80s, in my opinion. So this little switchboard used to be in a speaker box on the side here. Didn't like it. Obviously we wanted to make everything cleaner. This is our solar charge controller. Needed a space for that. These are our battery and Victron switches, as well as our Victron uh, 48 volt battery monitor system. We didn't really add much to the bottom side except for this little switch panel that again helps isolate our charge controller and inverter from everything else. And, uh, Oh, and we added this gooseneck light. But basically, we're going to rebuild this nav desk at some point during this refit. Don't know when, so it'll be it'll be a minute. But Jake and I both want somewhere that we can actually work. And right now we don't really have that space. And that's kind of problematic for us. So we wanna First of all, we want to turn this nav desk into a workable, usable desk that we can sit at. We want to be able to move the, the Victron Quattro charge controller from where it's at because it makes this aft berth unusable. And we want to unify the look of this entire electrical panel, modernize it, and um, and add some additional switches that right now we don't have um, in our boat. Like we'd like to add uh, USB charge ports for our cell phones, um, a couple of additional cabin lights, and some other new electronics that we can't yet mention. 
but keep an eye out for those because it's exciting. That's all the teas I'm going to give you for some of these new things. But ultimately, we don't have enough space to, uh, to add more to this panel. And we really want to just make it cohesive, unified, and, and finished. So, uh, so that's one of the, our big, big projects. Finished, seating, and lastly, the big, my biggest pet peeve is when you have stuff on here and you need to access something under here. It's a fast way to have drinks fly into your electrical panel. It's a fast way for have, having anything fly into your electrical panel. It just does not make sense to me, guys and gals and everybody in between. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So we're gonna turn this into a drawer. That basically covers our, our nav desk. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. That's our nav desk. So, this is the aft berth. Obviously. Duh. You're a bunch of boaties. You know, you know this. So, as Nick mentioned, the Victron is right here, so it's a nightmare to get in here. And we have the refrigerator here. Plus a bunch of storage behind it. Um, this kind of got turned into our junk berth for a while. Um, we actually, prior to leaving, we had it nice and cleaned up, um, with most of everything put away. Um, but it's not easily accessible because of everything that's in the way. So one thing we want to do is get it cleaned up so that it can turn into a berth again. Apart from the V-berth, this is the biggest berth in the boat. Arguably, it might even be bigger than the V-berth. So... That's why we use it as storage, but at the same time, we want to be able to have people stay with us. If we have family come out with us or friends, we need a place for them to stay so they're not sleeping in the settee or having to figure out a way to get the dinette turned into a berth as well. But what we want to do with this, apart from making it a berth again, is um, since we are losing storage where the fridge goes, underneath the companion way we do plan on putting two drawers just right here to take up a little bit of this space underneath the cockpit because i don't know about you but i don't want to sleep under that it's like freaking being in a coffin yeah once you put the cushions in you really don't have like any headroom yeah so over here's the kind of the big end which gives you about the size of a tw you know a twin bed if you're over here so that's all we really want to do back here is just put get it cleaned up so it's a berth again and put the drawers here and we're going to paint the liner so it matches the ceiling and is white. So pretty much every Catalina of this size has an aft berth. I'm not sure that I've ever actually seen one without one. But I know that if you ask anyone, well not anyone, but if you ask the manual or the technical guides on this, they'll say you can sleep six people. First of all, where? But... This is arguably the biggest berth, um, so it's kind of one of the nicer things about this is the fact that it is a decent sized berth yeah. back here. Children probably wouldn't mind sleeping. Oh yeah, underneath. you could totally put a children in this coffin. A size children berth over here. <laughs> Any children, but um, I'm Can not. Can you believe everybody? He's a writer. <laughs> I'm not planning on have children. I'm not planning on having children anytime soon. It won't happen accidentally. So. Gasp. Onward to the dinette the city. We are now in the dinette, or the dining room, or the living room, let's, or the let's sleeping room. <laughs> it's dining room, living room, sleeping room, office, nook, granny attic, office. <laughs> So it's, this is everything. This is your um, this is your bonus room in a house, except it's necessary because it does everything. And it's not really bonus in a boat because it's like the center. So of what we have done so far, nothing. That's not true. The only thing we what have I'm done on is it. directly underneath Nick, which is where our two Tesla batteries are at. Um, this is the third location of these. If you watch our electric motor saga, mm -hmm. this is the third placement of these, and it's still going to change. They will stay here, 
but we are going to make the box nicer and turn it into a full U-shaped dinette yeah. with a smaller table with folding leaves, arm things. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not great at describing that. No, you said you did it pretty, pretty well. So, and we will put it on a pedestal so that it can lower down and turn this into a berth. So that one, we have a place where we can relax and chill and additional place for people to sleep. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna call it like a berth slash lounging couch. In the 80s when Catalina was putting them out, you had kind of two renditions of this dinette. You had the L shape, which is what we have, and then the U shape. Mm -hmm. The U shape is now commonplace pretty much across the board with Catalinas, I think. I don't think I've actually seen a modern day Catalina with an L. No, but I would also say modern day Catalinas seem to have um, upped their quality game. We're not sponsored by Catalina, by the way. No. <laughs> it, it's just a basic observation. It feels like they're putting in nicer details. Oh, for sure, 100%. I mean, this Catalina 30, if you guys don't know, was really built for that, like, utilitarian family who... You're just going out for the weekend. Yeah, well, At best. Yeah, but I mean, like, it was kind of your blue-collar family boat. Makes sense. It wasn't, you know... It, it was affordable. Mm -hmm. It was. It was, it was your Toyota of boats. Which is weird because people think Hunter's the Toyota of boats. But Catalina 30s are the most popular cruising yachts ever. Yeah, with like 7,500 produced. So if you get a Catalina 30, um, kind of roughly around the early to mid 80s, late 70s, you're kind of going to get this general. Yeah. Generally, this is what you're going to get. From it. Okay, so on to what we're going to do. Yeah. So first things first, like Jake said, we're finishing this battery box because it's very raw right now. It's ugly. I'm just going to call it raw. <laughs> That's a nicer way to say it. Yeah. Um, okay, put so a cushion here. We have to build a cushion here. Speaking of cushions, all of the upholstery is being refreshed. Across the board. It's my whole boat. Yeah. Um, I'm going to learn to sew. Last year, as we were refitting, some of the cushions stayed. Like, the cushion that borders the galley island stayed, and we actually have, like, epoxy stains on it and fiberglass dust all over it. And Oops. Basically, like, the fabric's still good, but it needs a refresher. There's too much tan in here for our taste level. Yes, and then we are going that, to... That kind of shady. A little bit. A little <laughs> for bit. our taste level level is too tan <laughs> <laughs> um so what else we're going to do is so as you know we painted the cabin top yeah so we are going to continue that down on the rest of the liner to paint it white mm -hmm. one i hate beige two there's not a lot of light coming in you sure you have the lights but it's not as much as you would find on a modern day boat so by painting the white it makes it brighter and you're wider it makes it feel a little bit more open It'll make it feel more open. Yes. Right. So, and as Nick mentioned twice, we're getting rid of those little nuggets over here. Yeah. Because they're ugly. And then, lastly, in this area, I mean, we're, we have to build the new table and pedestal system. Well, but we're also nuggets. getting rid of these Bose speakers. I don't know if you can see it. Not there. because they don't work. They work great. They're just too big for the space. They're too big for the space. Like, you don't need. We don't need this kind of audio power down here. It's like 10 feet from one side of the boat to the other. Why do you need two speakers that probably could, one speaker could probably fill twice that space with sound? Uh, yeah. At max volume. More, more than that. So. so, yeah, we're getting rid of those because they take up valuable space. And here, space is absolutely a premium. And the last thing that we plan on doing, which is probably a big end, so we are removing a lot of the wood inside by that I mean we're gonna paint it. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody vomited wood all on the inside of this boat. So a lot of the wood we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna get rid of, but. It's not as bad as other boats. Like, no. in terms of the amount of wood, it's not as bad as other boats, but either way. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna keep the bulkheads wood and this is going to stay wood. Pretty much everything else is gonna be painted white mm -hmm. And we're going to change the color of this. So instead of being a cliche kind of brown, 
brownish reddish wood we are going to go with like a blonde wood stain um we're actually testing stains out now yeah to find the right one the fight right techniques and everything to see if it can even be done so really. that's kind of what we're going to do in here yeah um Glamour shot's not needed out of this. Um, one, it's ahead. Um, and apart from modern day boats, especially modern large boats, they're not super pretty. I mean, like, there's not much to say about this room. We have to finish the port light. Um, so we have not finished the port light. Um, and we haven't done anything in here, apart from this, to be perfectly honest. We haven't touched anything. So what we do want to do, though, is just make it a little bit nicer. We want to replace the toilet with an electric one. Um, like, same thing, get rid of some of the wood. Um, maybe replace these with stainless steel, paint this white, or put some kind of paneling up, move this mirror because it's horrible. Yeah, the we're going to rechange the sink and we're going to replumb the shower. Uh, that's it. So mostly it's just updating in here and kind of a little bit of beautification. And I'm we're going to fix this door. I can't. It's stuck. I don't know. It's because you're trying to open it. Do it again. Point taken. It's funny. Is it closed? No, it's not closed all the way. Close enough. Oh. Here goes the problem. That wasn't it. <laughs> take, take it to the V-Birth. <laughs> this is the V-Birth. Um, it fits two people. It's a V-Birth. Our water tanks are underneath. Um, oh yeah, we didn't mention that inside over there where like things were at and whatnot. That's right. Not important. Also, <laughs> probably the most amount of storage potential in the entire boat. Um, but it's a little tough to get in and out. It's probably one of the smallest V-berths um, I've ever seen so far in terms of headroom. Like, this is it. Um, some of the things that we want to do in here, we want to make this safer because... Every time I get in and out, I envision slamming my head into some of these screws, and that sounds literally the worst. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of deck hardware that that I just feel like is a little unsafe, and we want to make it safer. And most, in, not most importantly, but secondary is we're gonna paint everything white. Um, there's not much else we can do in here. Aside from like maybe building out some some little shelving lockers on the sides, but we also don't want to make the V-Birth any more claustrophobic than it is. If you have any ideas on how to transform a Catalina 30 V-Birth into something more liveaboard and like nicer in general, uh, leave them in the comments below or reach out to us personally. Um, we love seeing how people have, you know, solved some of these problems. And, uh, of course, we're going to be refinishing some of the woodwork in here. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on this boat tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's something that we didn't cover that you'd like to see let us know down in the comments. So, this is Ixion, our 1981 Catalina 30. It is a great boat. Sometimes we complain about it, but it is a really nice, solid, great boat, especially if you're just starting out, Yeah. like we are. Yeah, it's like, it's big enough to live on, but not so big that like, buying new sails breaks the bank. It's not so big that buying anything for it, like, breaks the bank it's generally reasonable yeah so everything we went over today is the list of all the things we want to do 
Right now. Yeah. What we do going forward is dependent on time and money mm -hmm. and money. Yep. So if, And money. Did, <laughs> did we mention that? <laughs> so it's, it's subject to change. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. We've got um, our wish list, we've got our our reach list, and we've got our realistic list. So it's a lot of lists. But we also, at points in the future, will be touring other boats. One, because we are looking for our forever boat. Two, mm -hmm. to gain ideas and inspiration for things that we can do on Ixion. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to expand on that, I mean, one of my favorite hobbies is, like, going on Yacht World and just seeing what's out there. Not necessarily because I feel like buying anything new right now or or anything like that, but just because I enjoy looking, looking at boats. it. Yeah. yeah. And so at this point, I've looked at so many boats so often, and there's, there's a few that I keep gravitating back to. And whether or not I we intend to buy anything new is kind of irrelevant. I just kind of want to actually see one see them in real life and say, hey, is this something that I want to work towards getting or not? That That's basically what where we're we're coming from is. Yeah, we just haven't been on enough to enough boats to know which ones we really like. And I'm ready to eliminate some of them from yes. the running. So that is it for this week. Um, yeah. Starting next week, we will be beginning projects. So if you don't already, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell next to it so you get notified every week when we put out a new episode. And if you're really enjoying what we're doing, please head over to Patreon. The link is down below. And uh, consider becoming a patron. And as always, don't forget to comment, give a thumbs up, and share and tell all of your friends about us. Yes, and lastly... I know we're asking you a lot to do right now. And if you want to stay on the pulse of everything that we're doing and uh, really want to be on the, in the know, um, head over to our website, sailingixion.com. Link is down below. And consider joining our newsletter. You'll get up-to-date information on what we're doing, what we're working on, where, we're, where we are, um, as well as um, updates for blog posts that Jake writes about. Some of them are sailing related, some of them are not. It's really, you know, a lifestyle blog to a certain degree. Yeah. Lifestyle, film, movies, TV, you know, the gamut of the things that both Jake and I are, are generally interested in. This channel specifically focuses on sailing, but the blog kind of delves outside of that a little bit more to give you kind of an all-encompassing look at our lives. And uh, it's fed also weekly so yeah so thank you all for watching and we'll see you next thursday or friday or whatever day we decide to pull this out so thank you all for watching <laughs> and we will see you next week bye, bye. oh we could run away Let's go.